Wow. Did they not serve coffee here today? Just, just checking. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, I guess, you know, in the absence of that, just sort of either pinch yourself really hard or slap yourself in the head. Whatever works to wake yourself up, because we're going to be talking about how to market your WordPress blog. Uh, my name is Christopher Penn. I'm the director of strategy at an e enterprise email marketing company called whatcounts.com. We will not be talking about the company today. Uh, this lovely chart here is available on my website. So if, you, if, you, if the screen is hard to see, if you're too far away from the screen, it's blurry, you're blurry, whatever, download it and, uh, as a PDF and then you can follow along on your iPad, your iPhone, your Android, Blackberry, Blueberry, Raspberry, whatever. <clears throat> Let's get started. Before we start talking about marketing, one of the things that people do really, 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 really wrong with marketing, but especially digital marketing, is that we tend to focus on the how. How do you do this? How do you make this work? How do you, what plugins should I be using? How do I do this? We never, ever, ever stop to say, why am I even bothering to do this in the first place? So the first section of how to market your blog is to figure out why you're even bothering in the first place. What do you want to do? What are the goals you want to achieve? If you're blogging for just yourself, your goal might just be, I just want to have a bunch of people read it. Or I want to have the right people read it. That's fine, if that's your goal, you know, make sure that you understand that. If you may have, uh, as Karen Rubin just talked about, if you're in the, an actual marketing department here, you may have to be doing things like lead generation. Uh, just out of curiosity, a quick show of hands. How many people are here for themselves personally? Okay, how many people are here for a business purpose? How many people are here for both? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> and then, of course, there is, um, you know, it's perfectly valid to try and actually earn some income off of your blog as well, and you can certainly do that. We won't be talking uh, much about the income stuff today because I wasn't asked to, um, but I would suggest looking into things like affiliate programs as the starting place because you can actually do beer money and then, you know, more than beer money down the road. <clears throat> Most things in marketing have a funnel. If you're not familiar with the funnel, this is a funnel. Um, in marketing, you have an audience. These are people who could read your stuff. The people who would be maybe be you know interested in reading your stuff. Let's say, for example, you are running a uh, substance abuse program. If you're looking for people who you know your audience of people who are having substance abuse problems or are related to them, there's a very good chance that if you don't have anyone in your life who is you know dealing with substance abuse problem, that that's not your audience, right? So you got to figure out who your audience is. First, who, if your blog is about cooking, if your blog is about marketing, if your blog is about World of Warcraft, who in the grand scheme of the internet is actually interested in what you're writing about? From there, you've got to figure out a way to get those people and have them become, you know, raise their hand and say, I'm interested in reading. I'm interested in learning more about what you have to offer. And we'll do this, we'll talk about this when it comes to some of the different methods. If you are doing this for business, at this point you probably want to have them make some kind of commitment to you. So not just reading your blog, which is good, but actually doing something, filling out a form, becoming a part of your mailing list, buying something as customers. And then at the very bottom, and this is kind of interesting because it works for both personal and business, are the people who absolutely positively love you so much that they will market for you. They will go out and tell the world that you exist and that you should be, people should be reading your blog. Blogging has its own sort of funnel, you know, audience, visitors, readers and subscribers, if you, again, customers and then evangelists. So it's not that different no matter whether you're doing it personally or professionally. One other thing that's really, really important as a conceptual idea that you, that you need to get into your head to understand blogging, because blogging is a lot about content, is this lovely chart here um, based on a talk given by a guy named Deb Roy over the river in uh, Cambridge at MIT. <coughs> Deb talks about content and a feedback loop with conversation, which is what we have a lot of today. So you have content, 80 people here, read your blog, they go up into this cloud of, of audience, whoever they are, wherever they are. It could be at the water cooler at the office, they could be on Twitter, they could be sitting in the, per the person sitting next to you. They talk about it and then they, you know, they tell people who come back down to your blog. This, for example, is a set of metrics from Facebook that says uh, 80 people hit the like button on my site. That got seen by 32,000 people and then 107 people extra saw that stuff and came back to my blog. To the extent that you can create content 
and have a seed list to get people to, you know, to get that initial 80 group of people there, you can then take advantage of this feedback loop to drive more and more people. This is the basis of pretty much all content marketing. If you just publish it and you don't have the audience piece, nothing works, right? So you have content, you build it, they will come, that never happens. That worked maybe like for the first five blogs on the internet. <clears throat> it's true. So content strategy, only half the puzzle. The audience, right? You need that. Uh, you, uh, you also actually do need content because this part at the bottom here, where it says, you know, good. This should actually probably say good content. If it says, if you have sucky content, that feedback loop will never get started because nobody wants to read about your cat unless there's a lot of people. You have a very famous cat. And then, of course, finally measuring things. So, so who's going to read your blog, right? Just, uh, just uh, actually, is there? Where'd the microphone person go? The, the one that was in the middle of the room there. Okay, uh, if anyone wants to just talk about who your audience is real quick, stand up and get to the, the stand there. Any volunteers who want to talk about their blog? Stand up and, st and go to that funny podium there. Do I really have to stand up? Yes. Oh, man. I know it's warm. That's okay. Tell me about your blog. Tell me about your audience. Um, well, we're uh, WordPress theme developers. Okay. Anyone? Uh, and uh, we're you know trying to get you know eyeballs of people who develop themes or creating Word WordPress sites. Okay, how do you find them right now? Um, <laughs> I, we launched this week, so we haven't done a very good job of finding them yet, but okay. we're, that's why we're here. Okay, very good. Anyone else want to take a shot? Uh, yeah. Tell, tell yeah. us about your blog. Um, we actually talk about local business listings um, and websites. Okay. And the way that we find, um, we're targeting local customers, the mom and pop business. So it's basically starting out just by um, trying to find them in the seven pack or in the, you know, you go and you search for them and you find them. So we're doing it like cold, starting off really cold. Okay, that's fine. That. Starting off cold is fine. Uh, one more person. Anyone? Anyone else feeling brave? Oh wait! Oh wait! Come on! Get up! Get up! Tell us uh, about your blog. Target audience is um, seniors, uh, folks who uh, need to start downsizing and organizing in order to relocate into uh, other facilities. So we're sort of targeting. Uh, elder care providers, service providers. In, How are you doing it? Um, through publishing some content of interest. Okay. All right. So we have a couple of people, you know, saying we're just getting started. We're trying to publish good content, sort of build it, then we'll come, and then sort of cold calling people. Let's talk about your network strategy. Remember, content network. Start with network. We'll start with network here. They have to be developed at the same time. How many people on your blog have some way for people to subscribe to it by email? Okay, how many people do not? Okay, your first homework assignment is go home, go to FeedBurner, which is a very popular website, and get the blog to email widget and put it on your blog. Something funny happened when I was uh, publishing a, a podcast, um, which uh, functionally is the same thing as a blog except louder. Um, <clears throat> when I put a little email subscribe box on my site, 20% more audience immediately like that start subscribing because some people just like email. They, it's familiar to them, they know what it is, they see what it is. You are missing a good chunk of your audience if you don't have it really easy on your site to say people subscribe to this by email. In addition to that, there are a lot of different ways to take your blog and get it distributed to people. Not just having the posts, but actually having a newsletter of your own. This, for example, is um, from my blog. I send out a newsletter every month that basically I look at Google Analytics, see what the top five posts were for that month, put it in a newsletter, and you know, along with some other stuff, and send it out to people. This brings back people to the top five pieces of content. This itself is shareable, so it builds the network. And there's mechanisms in this to say if you, if you want to forward this to a friend or share it with your social network, you can. This is a really simple thing to do. It costs you nothing except learning how to use Google Analytics to find your top five posts for the last month. But People miss stuff. How many people have, are subscribed to a, fa have a favorite blog they read? Okay, how many people have ever missed reading a post on it? Yeah, 100% of the room. 
this is how you, as the blogger, recover those people for the, your best content, for the stuff that the analytics say was the most popular. You put it in a newsletter and you send it to people. And oh, by the way, you can also use the newsletter for other stuff like promoting your things. Again, if you are doing this for business purposes, in addition to having the blog be out there, have some stuff in the site. Hey, you can buy my book. There's also something called an autoresponder. Anytime someone gen joins a mailing list, if you ha how many people have an email mailing list? Wow, okay, good, about a third of the room. <clears throat> With a mailing list, there's a thing called an autoresponder. The moment you sign up for it, it should send a piece of mail out. Most of the time, we waste this opportunity. Most of the time, we say, thanks for joining my list. And that's it, and you walk away. Hey, how about say, thanks for joining my list. By the way, we have a blog here that you can subscribe to. Put that in there. It's simple, it's easy, it, and it costs you nothing. Now, some of the tools to make these things happen, Gravity Forms is one of my favorites. Um, makes creating a form to subscribe to a newsletter, subscribe to a blog, whatever. Um, it does cost money. I don't remember how much, but it's 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 somewhere like expensive beer money, um, not cheap beer. Um, but it's one of those really useful things that can feed into other systems. You'll want to have things like you know uh, it, some kind of email service provider. If you don't want to spend money, Google Groups will do it for free. You'll have to put up with their ads in your email, but it, they will do it for free. And have some way of gathering up people and being able to keep track of them, especially if you want to talk to the people who are in your audience. Um, if, uh, there are enterprise systems like Salesforce.com. That's probably overkill for your blog unless you're Mashable. Um, for everyone else, there's something like Zoho. There's a question in the back there, real quick. Uh, someone throw the microphone. The whole email newsletter blast type thing, is that considering age? Because I know that in my age group, we hate email. Okay. Um, and it's obnoxious. So I'm just, you know, what, what portion of the audience does this apply to it, as far as age? It's not age based. Email is dependent on your habits and, and who you are and how you interact with the world. Most people, for example, who work in a corporate environment, even if they don't like email, you know, they get too much of it, they still have to you know, stare the inboxes, you know, punch the inbox in the face every single weekday. So it's more about who your audience is. If it's you know, drunk college students, you may want to have promotional stuff tied in with your blog on Facebook. That's okay. But still offer the email option because one of the things that you'll find with when it comes to all these challenges, the more of them that you can manage and offer within reason, the more likely it is you'll uncover segments of your, of your audience that you did not know was there. If you assume that you're just talking to college students and you assume that you should only have a, a you know, follow us on Facebook thing, you may have those parents who are checking it out too and you're completely missing them. So that's email marketing. Advertising is a good way to, to promote your blog if you have a budget. Uh, there's you know, sort of the big platforms, Facebook's pay-per-click program and Google AdWords as a program. AdWords is really expensive. Facebook is getting expensive, but depending on your niche and, who, and what you're blogging about can still be somewhat cost effective. If you can set aside, if, you know, on a commercial basis, you know, five to fifty dollars a day, um, Facebook is not too bad for getting people to actually visit your blog. Not just, the thing about Facebook that a lot of people misunderstand with their advertising system is that it's not just promoting stuff on Facebook. You can put your blog in there, you can put your company website in there, you can put whatever you want in there, but it does work reasonably well for getting people to at least stop by. Yes, ma'am? Someone throw the microphone. Um, so you just talked about Google AdWords and Facebook. Um, how do ads on LinkedIn rank compared to them? Price-wise, uh, results-wise, any info? You got to test. Uh, for for the, the work that I've done with LinkedIn, it's been really, really expensive. I mean, really expensive, and has not done all that well. It's you know paying five or six dollars a click. You go through that five dollar budget day uh, really, really fast. Next, social media, everyone's favorite. It's the shiny object in the room. There's a couple things with social media. Number one, you actually need to have a goal. Um, if, there's a lot of different things you can do in social to promote your blog. One of the worst you can do is have just be out there saying, hey, look at my blog all day long. That's really, really annoying. Um, and yet, strangely, a lot of people seem to do that. They go on to you know, popular uh, companies' websites and everything on Twitter is new blog post. And Facebook goes, new blog post. No one cares. <clears throat> so, starting with audience targeting. Who do you want? Do you want elder care people? Right. Do you want people who are, are WordPress developers? There's a ton of different ways to find the audience that you're looking for. Here's two tricks. 
Number one, if you have a, an email list already, take the email addresses, 100, 1,000, whatever. I'd say 1,000 is good if you have it. Load it into a brand spanking new Gmail account. Right? Fresh, totally started, brand new start. And then go social network by social network. The first thing you do when you sign up, it says, hey, invite all your friends from Gmail or whatever. And count, out of the 1,000 people, how many of them are actually on Twitter? Of your audience, people you know already. How many are on Facebook? How many are on LinkedIn? How many are on Google Plus? How many are on this or that? If you find that you have a database of 1,000 people and two are on Twitter, you probably don't need to spend a lot of time there. If you have 1,000 people and 897 of them are on Facebook, you probably should spend some time on Facebook. That's number one. Number two, there are some really, really good sites out there, free ones. Uh, Follower Wonk is one. I typed in WordPress. I want to see who on Twitter is talking about WordPress. Look, here's WordPress theme and plugin design. Here we have WordPress SEO. I can find these people and then go follow them right? if my audience are people who use WordPress. A second example. By the way, don't write down the stuff that's on the slides because you, you can just download it. Um, there's a good a, a site called Listorious. It says, hey, let's find people who are talking about WordPress. And, and these are lists, you know, sort of curated lists that people put together on, of social networks, mostly, mostly Twitter for right now. But these are all the prominent people that, you know, put up, or they think they're prominent, um, putting together their own lists and having them available publicly. Guess what? If your audience is the WordPress audience, follow them all. If your audience is you know, Red Sox fans, there are tons of lists like that. If your audience, you name it, it's out there. The third one I will suggest is a piece of software that I use. Full disclosure, I, I, I'm remarketed. It's called Tweet Adder. I said, show me everyone who's using the WordCamp Boston hashtag for the day. Did anyone notice I followed you? Yes, there's a reason for that. I find them all. I find everyone who's used the hashtag for the conference today and followed you all. You're welcome. <clears throat> but you see what I'm getting at. You, it's not just be in social media and you know, it, it, build it and they will come. Doesn't work for social any better than it works for your blog. Go and find the people that you're looking for and start following them. Start becoming a part of their. At least get on their radar screen and then hopefully, if your content doesn't suck, um, you will get their attention. Second thing. Specific, Karen talked about this a little bit in the last session, but even if you don't do the, quite the, the depth of example she was talking about, have a place on your blog for people from different social channels. So you can say, hey, Twitter friends, you know, are you a new friend on Twitter? Here's what I'm about. Or you know, are you a new friend from Facebook? Here's what I'm about. And have some level of introduction that tells people who you are, because every single social network has a biography that's this big. You can maybe fit your job title in there. This gives people a much better chance to get to know you. There's a question over there? No? Just really warm, waving your arms around? OK, awesome. Finally, while you shouldn't necessarily say, you know, read my blog every single day, uh, you know, every single message and every single day, beat people in the face with it, it is OK to introduce yourself. You know, on maybe a daily basis, maybe a weekly basis, whatever you're comfortable with. But do that as a way of getting people to your blog. Right? Your blog is your home base in social media. It, it is the one place that can't accidentally close down or get bought out by Google um, or Facebook, or uh, in my case, get kicked off. I got kicked off in MySpace 16 times in a row. Um, don't ask why. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. Your blog is your home base. So make sure that when, you're, when you are interacting with, with the social environment, that you have some way of getting people back to it, and that you have some way of capturing those people when they come in. There are any number of other different tools. There are, for example, um, official site widgets. Right? Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, and everyone will give these things. These are little pieces of code. They're usually JavaScripts. WordPress has a widgets function built into it. It's been in there since, what, 3.0? Is, as we, it's been in there. Most of it is client-side JavaScript, which means that you're not going to, you know, run any any major security risks. Put these things on your site. You know, this is uh, this one here, the lower one, is Facebook. Facebook tries to measure who has shared stuff from your blog and recommends it for new visitors. Very, very handy because it gets the content which is locked in your blog and makes recommendations to new people. By the way, this also shows up on Facebook, which again is talking about that content loop. Upper one, of course, is a LinkedIn profile, and you can do all sorts of fun things with that. But 
the social networks, as a way of reinforcing their own power bases, want to you know, get people involved in your stuff. So make sure you're using the official plugins. They are free to use, and they are really literally copy and paste into the widget control panel. There's another question somewhere. Someone was waving. Yes, right there. Throw the microphone. Someone. Am I off? I'm You're on. on. Okay. <laughs> um, backtracking a little bit, you were talking about um, loading your um, email database into a brand new Gmail yes. um, account and then finding out how what yes. social media people are involved in. Yep. I missed the part in between loading it and finding out. Sure. Every single time you go to a social network, when you sign up and also if you click on the Find Friends button, it will say, hey, why don't you connect your Gmail account? You, of course, click through and say, connect my Gmail account. And then you just, you don't have to actually go ahead and, and go through with it. You just look at the screen and it says, we found eight of your friends on Facebook who are, you know, who are in your Gmail account. We found 12 of your Twitter friends and so on and so forth. So that's how that works. Go to the mic. No, unless you hit follow, in which case they'll know very, very, very quickly. You're welcome. Yes, sir. So, so the question was, um, are there any WordPress plugins that will do the same thing? To my knowledge, there are not. It's kind of one of those elbow grease things. But um, if anyone knows of one, now would be the time to stand up. Yes, there, there's someone. A reporter for Gmail? Yeah, but yeah, that doesn't run inside of WordPress, unfortunately. Reportive? R-A-P-P-O-R-T-I-V-E. It's a Gmail plugin that lets you stalk all your friends right inside Gmail. People love that. Okay. So after we've been, now we've taught you how to stalk your friends on, on social media. There are other avenues. One of the greatest mistakes digital marketers are making today is that they assume social media is the be all and end all of marketing. It is not. Um, it is useful, it is certainly cost effective, but it is not the only thing out there. When you are at events, if you can get a speaking slot, that helps. Um, but even if you're not, even attending at things like trade shows is a great way to reach people, particularly if you have a business focused blog. There is a trade show for everything, and it's not always called a trade show, it's called a conference or a camp or something like that. But I guarantee you, if you are blogging about something, there is a show about it somewhere. Unless you're possibly talking about people dressed up as otters smearing themselves in peanut butter. Um, there may not be a show for that. When you go to a trade show, there's a little secret about the trade show floor. The people who are at those booths can't leave. <laughs> so, you <laughs> so that's a perfect time for you to introduce yourself and get to know them. And you also know something else about them because they're there. They, have, they or their company have at least some level of investment in the space because they paid between $1,000 and $10,000 for that little 10 by 10 piece of paradise. Um, so even if you are not speaking at the event, go introduce yourself, figure out who the players are in the space, and see you know, there's, there are good opportunities there for people to talk to, and maybe get guests for, your, for guest blog posting. But events are, are very useful. Do we have any questions on the network portion before we move to the content portion? Last chance, going once. Going twice, I'm hitting the heroic button. All right. <clears throat> so content is the other half of, of making this stuff useful. Use the syndication mechanisms, RSS, RSS to email. Guest posting on other people's sites is very effective as long as, because they, they stand a very good chance of letting you put lots and lots of things like calls to action to your blog in them. Inviting people to guest post on your site is equally effective. Um, I did this in April. I invited 10 of my friends to blog on my site, and every single one of them, which has, of course have their own social networks and their own audiences, made prominent mention that they were blogging on my site. It brought in quite a bit of traffic, and it was good content. It was actually, it was better than my content, so I almost considered giving up my blog. <clears throat> um, and make sure you're using the obvious plugins for social sharing in your content. Share this, add this, you know, play with this, send this to people, punch people in the face with this. Whatever the plugin is, there's tons and tons of them in the, in the WordPress codex. Um, pick one, try it out. If it doesn't, if it makes your blog look ugly, turn it off and find the next one. Um, I personally use Add This, but I personally use Add This only because they give you just a plain old text link in addition to all the fancy buttons. And if you have 
things like an email newsletter where you want someone to share your blog via email, that's the only one that actually works. But that's personal, you know, I'm not uh, endorsing it in, in other ways than that. In terms of search engine optimization, there's two halves. There's stuff you do on your blog, and there's stuff that you, do, that you don't do on your blog. Uh, Karen talked a little bit about some of the plugins for on your blog, like all-in-one SEO is useful. It's, uh, you just tell, you know, oops, wrong one. Um, you just tell it what to do. There's one called Smart Links, which I actually like that. You give it a list of words, and you give it a list of URLs, either on your blog or off your blog. And every time you write one of those words or phrases on your blog, it automatically links it for you. This is a major time saver for me because in a lot of cases, like for example, I occasionally reference my friend Chris Brogan or, or my teacher Stephen Hayes, and me being you know blogging first thing in the morning and not always have the first cup of coffee, I'll forget. This kind of cleans up my mess after me. Very useful. <clears throat> if you have more than one blog, this is a very, very useful plugin to use. And SEO smart links. Here's the thing about search engine optimization on site. Most of it these days, beyond getting it readable in, in Google, beyond getting the engines indexed, doesn't have much impact anymore. Because all of the major search engines now are, are working on algorithms to say, let's figure out how you can cheat and let's then not rank those things. So it used to be, we used to say things like, okay, make sure that your keywords that you want to be known for are bolded on your blog. Well, until some jackass bolded every word on their blog. Um, Let's make sure the page title matches exactly the things you'd search for until, again, someone else did, you know, made an entire you know, WordPress spam blog of all the popular keywords. So the engines don't count what's on your site for as much. Maybe 20, 25% of your search ranking is based on what the, you do on your site. Do the basics to make it readable. Do the basics to make it usable to humans and friendly to humans. And then spend most of your time off-site. What do you do when you're off-site? Um, Start with link building. Yeah, Open Site Explorer, you type your blog name in, you can see who's linking to your blog. You can do this for competitors, for other people in the space, and see who's linking to them. So let's say you're doing an elder care blog. You can figure out who, you know, who some of the major providers are in the same space. Like, uh, for example, VinFen runs a, a very popular uh, set of things. So you say, okay, type in VinFen.com and then see who's linking to them. And then go after those folks and say, hey, I've got a blog about elder care too. Would you consider adding me to your index? Uh, would you consider you know, mentioning me in social media? Whatever the case may be. But this is a very handy tool for figuring out who else in your space is interested, is doing these things, and where they're getting their links from. And then, of course, you can do the same. You can even do sort of side-by-side -side matchups. <clears throat> there are a lot of sites like Quora, back of the day, Yahoo Answers and Google Answers, and uh, you name it. There's a lot of these you know, question and answer sites. Uh, LinkedIn has one built into it. These are great places to showcase your expertise, not only because you're actually providing useful information, hopefully, um, but it also is a good opportunity to get people linked back to your content. So uh, if you have the time, and it is a time suck, uh, consider using some of the different question and answer sites online. There's earned media. How many people here are subscribed to helpareporter.com? See, this is the first audience in like two months that has been more than one person. Awesome. And for those people who are not subscribed, it's called helpareporter.com. It's free. Every day, three times a day, Peter Shankman sends out a list of inquiries from journalists. Everything from, hey, can someone talk about the new you know, Viagra alternative to uh, what's a good travel package in Bali for under $18 a day. And it's a whole long list of these queries. If you're blogging about something that reporters are likely to be talking about, like Amy Winehouse, um, there will be a query in Help a Reporter that you can answer and get yourself some earned media. And it's not just other bloggers, and sometimes it's things like OCNN. Um, so it's a good opportunity, it costs you nothing. So make sure you're using that. And finally, uh, good old fashioned social signals. So as much as we would like to say social media is, is sort of entertaining, Google especially, and Bing to some degree, have recently started paying very, very close attention to social signals, to how things are shared. In fact, it's to the point now where your search results will be different than the person next to you based on who you are connected to in social media. So let's say you're all connected to me. Um, if you follow back, you will be. Um, and you type in the word email marketing. My company's site, because I've shared it on Twitter, will appear higher in the results that you see than if you were not connected to me. This means that you as a blogger, you as a, as a content creator, need to develop a stable of folks, including you know, people who are loud and have large audiences, 
because you will actually be influencing the search results of those people, their audiences. So when they type in elder care, when they type in WordPress plugins, or when they type in you know, uh, personal assistance, or when they type in project organizers, your stuff, because you're sharing stuff and you're connected to their network, will be different. Is, it, is that clear to everyone? Okay, social media, what you share and who you're connected to, you influence their so search results. So if you're friends with someone on Facebook, if, you are follow, if someone is following you on Twitter, and you are sharing stuff from your blog, and people are searching for the stuff that's about, that you blog about, if you're sharing it in social media, when those people who are following you, or your friends, search, their search results will be different. Your blog will show up when it probably shouldn't if, they, if you were all not connected in social media, which means it's really, really, really kind of scary and a little bit creepy. <clears throat> If you're not building a social network, you are basically losing out on the newest version of search engine optimization. If you're not doing something that's public facing in social media, um, you are going to be you're going to be taking a bigger penalty. If you are focused on your audience and you do the stuff that we talked about in the social media section about finding out who your audience is and connecting with them, how many people are familiar with a term called retargeting? Okay, for those of you who are not, retargeting used to be an expensive thing to do where you would buy ads and then uh, every time someone was surfing the web, if they visited your site first, the ad network would serve up your ad again to say, hey, you were there at this, just at the site, why don't you come back? Social media is letting you do organic search retargeting. Social media is saying, hey, you're friends with Michelle Wolverton, you're friends with CeCe Chapman, you're friends with Christopher Penn. Here's some things that you, you know, when you search for stuff that I talk about, you're going to see me higher in the search results. So think about that. It's a lot to wrap your brain about. Um, if you have questions about it, there's a really long blog post on my WordPress blog about it. <clears throat> so that's off-site optimization in a nutshell. On your site, you can do advertising and you should do advertising of your own. How many people have some kind of promotional thing like subscribe to this blog in your te WordPress template? Okay, almost all the room. How many people have it in the post? Okay, no one. Here's the problem. With the way RSS works, if you have something that's in the template, the template doesn't go along for the ride. If you put something in the content, it goes along for the ride. So here, for example, is a plugin I use called Shortcode Exec PHP. All it does is let me make my own shortcodes. Yay, not a really big deal, right? I use a little shortcode at the bottom of my post called bottom of post. It has ads and crap like that. Because it's in the post itself, because it's inside of the loop, because it's in the content, every single time you look at this in, in Google Reader, or you retweet it, or some spammer you know, scrapes my feed, they get my ads. You get my ads, right? If it's in the template, you never see it, right? So here, you know, get, my, get my blog by email, get my blog by the RSS feed. If it's in the template, it's never seen. If you put it, the short code in the blog post itself, it gets picked up in the RSS feed. Um, there's any number of shortcode plugins out there that will do this. I use PHP uh, shortcode exec because I'm a nerd. Um, this is a pop-up. This goes to my newsletter, but you can obviously put other things in the pop-up. How many people love pop-ups? What's wrong with you? So here's the, here's the problem that we all face. Even though you don't love pop-ups, they work really, really well. The reason why is that all this wonderful digital technology has given us the attention span of gnats on crack. As a result, if you don't do something to get people's attention right away the moment they hit your site, and you can check this for yourself, look at your bounce rate in Google Analytics, um, if you don't do something to get their attention, they will, people will just kind of come and go, and that's okay if, you're, if your job is only to get people to look at your blog. But if you want them to do anything else other than look at your blog, things like pop-ups work really, really well. This is an ugly newsletter subscribe box that pops up on my site for every first time visitor. Um, you're welcome, you'll, you will see it shortly. <clears throat> I had uh, you know, a reasonable number of people subscribe to my newsletter beforehand. The moment I put this on my WordPress blog, um, it's, a, it's a WP Super pop-up, it's a plugin I think. The moment I put this on, I had a 733% increase in the number of people who subscribed to my e newsletter. Doesn't that, but it's, we like pop-ups, but they work really, really well. Okay, so make sure you are advertising on your own site. Make sure you're advertising on your own blog. Think about if you are offering any kind of rich media, like video or audio, that you put together a download center. Make this a page, but give people that page and they will link to your stuff. They will link to your site. 
and of course they will promote it for you. And finally, make sure when it comes to discussion that you have a discussion plugin that is some, somewhere how aware of more than your blog. I know there's a lot of if people have you know religious debates about which discussion system to use. I don't care. Use one that's socially aware. Um, that's the only piece of advice I would give you there. I personally use Discuss. Um, I've been trying out Livefire. I've got I've tried every other commenting system. But the ones that are socially aware bring in attention and push it back out. So make sure that you're trying to use some of that stuff. The last thing, because I just got the five minute warning, I want to talk about is your analytics. Analytics are really good. At re How many people have, are you using Google Analytics? Okay, how many people are using no analytics at all? Good, very good. Things to look at in Google Analytics, make sure that you're paying attention to actual objectives. If you don't have goals and goal values configured inside of analytics and have assigned some value to what your, the actions on your blog, you will never know what's really, really working well. Uh, even if you have to fake it, even say you know every every newsletter subscriber is worth a dollar, even if you have no idea, just put something in there so that you have a better or worse you know idea of what's working. So we have raced through what was essentially an eight-week marketing course in about 40 minutes. Um, We literally have about five minutes left, so let's go ahead and, and play football with the microphone. This whole chart is on my website, so download it, and it's then, okay, who's got the mic? Right there, ChristopherSPen.com. Yep. Hey, Chris, what's the name of the program that you use to put that thing together? MindNode for the Mac. Got it. If you use a PC, sorry. <laughs> MindNode. Yeah, MindNode. One of my favorite things. Okay, who's got the mic? Throw the mic. Throw it quickly. Or just get in line. We can put it on the stand in the middle of the room. Hi, you mentioned uh, shortcodeexec.php. Could you explain that just a little further? Uh, is this putting ads in your RSS feed or? Shortcodeexec is a, is, a, is a plugin that lets you make your own shortcodes. It will run PHP as, you know, it will execute PHP so you can do all sorts of interesting stuff with it. Like one of the things that I do with it is I actually run um, contextual, if you're a coder, it's really useful. If you're not a coder, just put HTML in there, it's fine. Next. Yeah, okay, yell. I spoke about affiliate marketing for about this big. Yes, affiliate marketing is probably, in fact, some of the things in this chart are affiliate marketing programs. Um, thank you. <clears throat> Affiliate marketing is probably one of the best ways to get started with generating actual income off of your blog, especially if you have a topic area that involves things that people actually want to buy. Um, to start with it, I would suggest going to some of the larger affiliate networks like Commission Junction, um, Share Sale, Links, Link Share, and seeing what's available. Your best bet when starting out affiliate marketing stuff is to market stuff that you already use and own because you can talk intelligently about it. Like I use TweetAdder, it's, it's in this chart. I use it, I love it, it's running right now, it's following people, the people in the next room. Um, I would, there are things in there you'll find in affiliate programs that pay really well, but unless you actually know something about them, it just looks kind of strange to be talking about it. But if you have stuff that you love and know, whether it's part, you know, brands, whether it's merchandise uh, that you like, those are good places to start. Um, there is a really, uh, there's a couple of really good blogs about affiliate marketing that I would recommend. Um, Shoemoney.com, uh, which is Jeremy Shoemaker. Little course around the edges, so obviously if you don't like strong language, his blog is not for you. Um, and uh, David Finch runs uh, one called FinchSells.com, which is even harsher, but has a lot of really good data and a lot of really good ideas for getting started with that. To set your expectations, affiliate marketing is beer money, and I mean cheap beer. Um, to start and then as you gain your audience as you grow your audience it becomes worthwhile it takes a long time there is no such thing as unless you already have a million visitors a day to your blog affiliate marketing is not going to let you quit the day job in fact you probably shouldn't quit the day job just generally right now last question anyone going once going twice goodbye everyone thank you very much